Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is a collab with the beautiful Anya. Also known as Pink Sweets here on YouTube. Now, she has been doing a series for some time now where she has been combining Jeffrey's Bloodlust palette with other palettes of his. Now, she knows my favourite Jeffrey palette is the Alien palette. So she's asked me, would I like to join in with doing an Alien Lust palette? And pretty much like the tiger that bit curls his arm off, I jumped at the idea. So, if you want to see exactly which colours I used from these two palettes, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Oh, and my friends. You have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Right. I no doubt will have shown you <coughs> these in the intro. Now my lovely friend and one of my two YouTube wifeys, because I'm doing a Joe Exotic and I'm going to have two of them, as well as my straight actual husband, but YouTube wifeys, Anya, also known as Pink Sweets here on YouTube, she has been doing a series where she's been combining Bloodlust with her other Jeffree Star palettes. And she knows I love Alien, my favourite Jeffrey palette. So she said, would I like to join her in this one and do an Alien Lust look, combining both palettes. And I just bit her hand off, like the tiger did to Kelsey on Tiger King. Um, anybody else obsessed with that? Everybody else is obsessed with that, what am I saying? Of course they are. Um, I just, I bloody love that show. I've got hooked on the song. There's two songs in particular that get me. Here Kitty Kitty and I saw Tiger, Tiger so mean. There is an amazing meme where there's this little white kitty cat <laughs> in a cowboy hat. If I remember, I'll include it here somewhere. It just had me in pieces, it really did. If I forget, nudge me and ask to get onto my Insta or something. Now, not about Tiger King, this is meant to be about makeup. But, as always with me, you get what you get. This is still a teaching channel though, um, and as such, if I am going to slowly for you, feel free to use the speed widget up there somewhere and speed me up, I really don't care. Um, I do this because I want beginners to be able to keep up with me. And also my chronic pain means I can't blend any quicker than I already do. So, from very early on in my channel, I've been talking about the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes because they have similar issues when it comes to the application of makeup the longevity of makeup. Um, and I hear a lot of people, even bigger YouTubers, saying, oh yeah, I've got hooded eyes, and I look at it and I think, no, you've got deep set eyes, there's a difference. So, um, I've started to hear other channels talk about it now, since I've been making such a thing about it on my channel, but I'm not entirely sure they'll know what they're talking about. They, um, tend to just be parroting what they're hearing me say without really looking like they know what they're talking about. 
but anyway I'm about to insert a clip it's going to be very up close and personal it will literally just be focused on my eyes for those of you who haven't seen my channel before um, I'm going to talk you through how to work out whether you've got deep set eyes or hooded lids and I'm going to explain to you the workaround for the different types of lids. You may find you've got one hooded lid and one deep set eye. You may find as you get older you develop hooded lids because obviously things tend to lose elasticity over the years. So I will insert that clip just here and then when it's finished I'll be back to start putting some colour onto here. Oh, these um, I have not broken curfew or anything um, or lockdown. These are stick on nails so I am fully expecting at least one of them to ping off. So far I've already had to re-glue four of them and they've only been on three days so yay me. Each clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds 
if you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. And I am back. Hello. Well, as I'm using two Jeffrey palettes today, I thought I'd use some of his brushes as well that he did with Morphe. So I'm going to start off with the JS12. And this is a small blending brush. It is clean, see there's no colour coming off it, it's just stained. I haven't it's due its weekly wash. Right, this palette is one of the few that I actually keep this plastic condom thing on because of the the two new type where are they? They're in there. These two new type of um, shadow that he's put in because they do tend to flake a bit so put that on there just to keep it as neat as I can this is the other problem this is this won't fold back so you end up with this bloody look how long this is from one end to the other look which when you've not got a lot of space in front of you it's not that easy to deal with but let's continue Right, I am going to start off, I think, I don't think I've used Scandal Water yet, so I'm going to start off with that one, which is a lavendery, blue, a lavendery sort of bluey lilac. So, pick the uh, pigment up on the brush, hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I'm going to start a little bit lower down than usual. Just start building up in circular movements. Now I, I start off with the Viennese waltz of blending. So I have natural turns going towards the nose. Bit of a fleckle when I get there. And then reverse turns to come back out again. Now I do this for a number of reasons. One, I find this is actually the most effective way of blending colours out um, evenly. But also, in a couple of weeks I'm going to be 46. I've lost 14 stone, which is 200 pounds. Actually, it's probably a bit more than that now. I haven't weighed myself for a little while. Um, so the skin on my eyelids moves, and by doing circular movements, you're very gently moving the skin of your eyelid around in one direction and then the other, which is far more effective than just this sort of movement at making sure you don't miss any of the areas that you are applying shadow to. Obviously this is Scandal Water from the Bloodlust palette. I forgot to mention that. I forgot I was using two palettes again. I need to tell you which palette I'm using, for those of you who don't know. So it's Scandal Water out of Bloodlust. And I'm just building the colour up slowly. I much prefer to do this. I much prefer, because I know how pigmented Jeffrey's colours are, I much prefer to just pick a little bit up on the brush and blend it and then add a bit more and blend it and add a bit more and blend it until it gets to the shade that I'm looking for. Now I know what you're thinking, if you're in your 20s you're like, well I haven't got some creasy eyelids, what do I need to do that for? Well because sweetie, I know 20 year olds who've always been slim that have looser 
eyelids. You know, it can just be a genetic thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're old or that you've been fat and lost weight. You know, and it's just, like I said, to me this gives you one of the best blends as well because it also helps blend your edges out without too much effort, without blending too much of the colour away. So I'm going to go in and do the same thing on the other eye. Now, when you're doing this, it's always a good idea to sit back from your mirror and just check that your shapes are looking about the same because your eyes are not symmetrical. The only way you get your eyes absolutely symmetrical is to use Photoshop, like a certain Jimmy Chuck. I don't do that. I don't use any filters. I don't use any skin smoothing or blurring or anything like that. When I put photos up, they are accurate representations of the look and my skin. Um, the only times I put things up that have been tinkered about with, shall we say, is if I've used a Snapchat filter, in which case it's bloody obvious because I've got like a pair of ears or a pair of horns or, you know, cat-shaped pupils. Now with this eye, the skin this side, I don't know if you've noticed, it moves a lot more. And I've also got super deep creasing here. Right, can you see that barcoding effect that's happening there? That tiger striping? because this is the eye that was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So, you know, nearly 41 years ago, then pulling this eye around has left me with that super deep creasing. Um, I don't tend to worry too much when I'm doing the matte shadows, but when it comes time to put shadow on the mobile lid here, I do have to treat this eye slightly differently to the other one, but I'll explain more about that when we get to that stage. So, Anya. Um, regular viewers will know that I've collabed with her a number of times, um, both individually, like we are here today, uh, a couple of smaller groups, she, I and Nona are part of the uh, Bitches Vswick. Uh, she, I and Angelica Lirma are the triple A threat girls. Um, we've been in a lot of bigger collabs together, things like um, the Paulina tribute collab that we did, um, the Nona collab when she lost Mojo, her dog. So, you know, regular viewers will have seen her on my channel a lot. For those of you who are maybe new to me and haven't seen her, either me or her before, she is one of the most genuine, supportive, kind people in the makeup world on YouTube. I'm just going to clean the excess off of this on a microfiber cloth because I'm about to change colour. Um, she's just... I feel honoured to know her. She's, she's such a lovely woman. She, she gives her time to anybody, regardless of their self. She'll collab with you if you've got one person following you. Or one million people following you, and she'll treat you the same. She advocates for smaller channels whenever she can. 
and, and makes a point of trying to help smaller channels grow. Which is just, when you see the behaviour of some of the larger channels on here, it certainly shows you that kindness and generosity in the beauty world is not missing. It's, you just have to look to smaller channels to find it. Right, I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to go into Deviant, which is a lighter shade. <clears throat> and I'm just going to use that to buff the edges out here and to bring this outer corner up a bit further, just a little bit closer to my brow. Talking of brows, how the heck does Joe Exotic's eyebrow ring stay in? I mean, that thing's clinging on for dear life. <clears throat> I mean, I know eyebrow piercings can grow out, but damn, boy, you, you need to get yours redone. And when he started talking about his Prince Albert and putting a padlock on it, I'd have to think if that's in the same state. Good grief. So you can see that's just really softened the edge of that and also came down the inner part here just to soften. I'm just going to dip the tip of the brush, brush back into scandal water just to go over where the two shades meet to give that a little bit more depth. See? See the difference that makes just adding that one extra shade? So I've just wiped the brush off again because I'm going back into the lighter shade of Deviant. Still in the Bloodlust palette. I'll tell you when I change to the Alien Planet. Planet palette. weird because normally Geoffrey releases a palette in April which is great because oh. hubby normally buys it for me for our anniversary, a wedding anniversary um, and obviously he's had to delay it because my California is at the moment he's not allowed to trade he's still waiting on part of the components to come in to build the damn things anyway. Um, so Hubby said, you know, what do you want for your anniversary? And I'm like, well, anniversary and birthday, we can't exactly go out and celebrate them because it's, it's locked down. So just wait until everything lifts and he can start selling and just grab me the palette and, you know, some of the lippies and stuff if I like them. So he's like, okie dokie. But in the meantime, he's treated me to um, a kit that I found on Depop of someone someone was selling. Um, do your own acrylic nails at home. So I should be having a bash at that when they arrive. But I've also got a set of nails on the way to me that's been designed by, um, I'm in a couple of makeup groups on Facebook. And in one of them, one of the um, admins, or actually the person that started the group, her sister, is a nail artist. And she's designed Tiger King stick-on nails. So like this, it covers the whole of your nail. And she was doing them for like 25 quid a set. And not being funny, that's what I pay for a set of acrylics in town. And the beauty of these, of course, is that where they stick on I can reuse them. Because even if I do start doing my own acrylics at home, I'll probably do like two or three infills and then do a soak off and just put fake nails on for a little while just to give my natural nails a bit of a break and then go back into my acrylics again so I can still... I've got this set, I've got... Um, 
a blue set that I've got that I've got like a, some of them I've got a little silver edge on. I've got these which we can't actually get here in the UK, or at least I've never seen impress nails um, in the UK. These were sent to me um, by Shari when she sent me the um, the half size Dominique Cosmetics or Sharia. Sharia? Sharia? If I've buggered your name up, I really apologise. I'm having a fibro day. Um, she sent me the, the half sized Dominique Cosmetics palette from the Boxy Charm. And uh, included those press on nails for me as well, which I just thought was so sweet of her. Right. I think I'm going to swap to the Alien palette. And again, I nearly said Planet. What is with me today? And this is another long one. And if you heard that, yes, that was my shoulder. But at least with this one, you can actually fold it back on itself. Not really. Hey, yep. But you can do that, which makes life a little bit easier. Okay. So I'm going to go in with a smaller brush. This is one I've been using. This is the JS12. I'm going to go in with the JS13, which is this dinky one here. Because I'm thinking I might do a halo eye, because I haven't done a halo eye for a while. I think that might look cute. <clears throat> so, on in the Alien palette, I'm going to go into area 51, which is a beautiful, beautiful purple. And I'm going to start off over here where my natural crease is. If you've moved your crease, obviously this is the point that you now follow wherever you've had to make your new line. And I'm just going to use this. Gently buff and so, tiny little circular movements. I'll just windscreen wipe when I get to this edge here. So I don't want it to go too high up the eye in the corner there. And then just carefully build up. the outside edge here. That's so nice. I'm going to carry that down. Onto the outer edge of the mobile lid and the inner part of the lid. I'm just going to grab a small mirror so I can see a little bit closer up what I'm doing. And then just kind of build up the uh, 
purple that links the two. How pretty is that? Hmm? I still can't believe he's getting rid of this palette. This is my absolute favourite out of all of his palettes. And I'm seeing people now that are started because it's been discontinued and a lot of his retailers don't have it now because you know it, it sold out basically I've seen people on Depop selling it for stupid money because it's discontinued and you just think I mean, I'm going to be absolutely gutted when I, if I, end up using all of Probe in this particular palette. Um, I just wish that he would, I wish he would design a Jeffrey shaped or Jeffrey styled magnetic palette and then sell individual shades from all of his palettes so that if there is a particular shade that you like I mean for example safe word in and um, the androgyny palette is the absolute perfect contour shade if you're as pale as I am you know so same thing again here now what I am going to have to do with this one because I'm going to need to go into the inner bit there I don't want if I don't stretch the lid out that side the pigments pack into the creases really loosely and then through the day they fall into my eye, they fall down my face. However, I only stretch the bit of lid that has the creasing. I only pull it out far enough to add the pigment and make sure it's blended out. And as soon as I'm happy with the application, I let go. And then again, just link those two. I go through phases of doing halo eyes, and then I'll go for ages where I just don't do them. But I did a halo eye on the pick collab that I did with Chelsea not so long ago. And it reminded me how much I like them. So I decided I'd do the same thing today. Right, clean the brush off. Now I'm going to use one of Jeffrey's lip brushes. This is JS24. Because it goes nice and flat. If I put it against my hair you can see. But where it's pointed like that you can get it right into the inner part of your lid without it going too high up which if you've got deep set eyes or hooded lids is exactly what you need basically I'm going to get a spray out to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment I'm going to go for this MUA Pro Base cooling spray today Let's just give it a test squirt to make sure it's it's a squirting vine, which is uh, it's terrible, doesn't it? Right. 
I'm going to go into Space Cowboy. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. Yeah. Some call me the Gangster Love. Okay, so I've wet both sides. I'm going to dry this ferrule off. Easiest way to do it is tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the bristles on your brush because then it won't be a brush anymore it'll be a stick I'm just going to apply this just on the inner part there outer part there. I'm just going to get a clean brush and dust away. This is why I do my base afterwards because even when you wet the brush if you've got crinkly eyelids still going to get full out. Like so. See I'm the sort of person, I didn't have any clue what I was going to do with this look today until I sat down and looked at the two palettes this morning. But that's the sort of person that I am. Unless I've got <clears throat> specifics so like with the photo inspiration where you can only use colours in the picture or you know palette bingo or whatever I um, I don't tend to plan what I'm doing in terms of the look I just Just go for whatever colour calls me at that particular morning. So again, adding I love this space cowboy colour. Really is pretty. But in a minute I shall be using Probe and you will see why it's my favourite shade from the palette. Right, again, clean off the brush. I'm just using a microfiber cloth. You can use a flannel or a washcloth or kitchen roll. You can use whatever you want. Um, I stopped using colour switches because they were too harsh on the bristles of the brushes especially if you had um, natural brushes these are synthetic the ones that I'm using today but it's colour switches are not kind to your brushes if you're only using cheap brushes that you don't mind replacing every six months then fine use a colour switch right so I've now got probe on here can you see how that shifts in colour I'm going to pop that right in the middle of the lid. Just like I'll do it with a fallout later. I wonder if I've got enough on the brush to do this side as well. Oh yeah, I have. Look at that. But hopefully you can see now why I really, really like this particular shade. It's just 
so pretty. I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles just to sort of blend that out into the top of the Space Cowboy shade. How cute is that looking? I'll, I'll deal with the fallout in just a moment. I'll, I'll, I'll do that for the minute, so hopefully it won't annoy me too much when I'm editing and won't annoy you too much while I'm chatting to you. Right, so I am going to pause you while I go off screen and put some base products on, some foundation and whatnot. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you now. I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record in order to chat to you. But you, my darlings, you are going to see me instantly. So I'll see you right now. And I am back. Uh, I did the, the whole soap brow thing. And used Ghost OG from the Alien palette, this one here. To brush through them and just deepen them up a little bit and now staying with the alien palette I'm going to get my flat top brush and I'm going to dip into area 51 which is that purple and I'm going to run this along the lower lash line if you don't have one of these flat liner brushes you can always use um, like a brow brush or a gel liner brush or if you've got a very very fine pencil brush you could use that But I just, I cannot use anything in my waterline. Because it just, it makes my eyes stream and there's just no point. Now I'm going to grab... The Bloodlust palette. And this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped but it's chunky. I absolutely love this for blowing out um, my under eye shadow. If you don't have this or you don't have a brush like this you can just use an ordinary um, smudger brush or um, a very densely packed shader would do it. And I'm going to dip into Deviant which is the lighter of the two shades that we used on our upper lid I'm going to use that just to buff along the lower lash line and soften that out whilst tying the colours on the top with the colours in the bottom like so and then no I am then I'm in that film uh, I'm going into the platinum ice palette this is just a cheap lip brush that I picked up from eBay years ago I'm going to go into pink chill And pop that along the brow bone. This is meant to be the more subtle highlight in this particular palette, but I'm going to dip into ice cold for the inner corner and as always, run that under the tear duct. And just blend it into the colours under the eye. 
you can just leave it at the inner corner if you want but I just like I think with my eye shape that just finishes it off nicely if you can put something in your waterline um, if you've got a pale pink or a pale lilac that would look lovely or a nude or just a plain white um, right I'm going to pause you for one last time I'm going to lob some more highlight over my face do my lashes choose a lipstick and I'll be back with my finished look again for you instant so please don't go anywhere I am back okay I've got a mixture of pink chill ice cold and a lavender snow on my cheek because I felt like dazzling the gods, they couldn't see what I'm up to. Uh, mascara is the Essence Lash Princess, the orange one, which is the Volume Mascara. Lippy is the Gloss from Jeffrey, and it's, I think it's, what shade is it? Sickening, darling. Absolutely sickening. So, this is my finished alien lust look what do you think do you like it which shades would you have gone for from those two palettes if you were the one that was collabing with Anya hmm? I'm so excited that she asked me to be part of this because I have got to admit I think this is one of my favourite looks that I've ever produced. So, if you're part of my 4F beauty family, please double check you're still subscribed. You are getting unsubscribed left, right and centre. In some cases, I'm still appearing in your newsfeed, even though you have been unsubscribed. So. Just double check when you're watching a film that the subscribe button still says subscribed. Um, and while you're there, just double check that the notification bell is still rung for you. Um, please give this a like or a dislike if you didn't like it. Um, it does help in terms of the algorithm and um, pushing the film out to people who perhaps haven't yet had the fun of joining in with one of our films. Once you have done that, I'm going to need you to go across to the beautiful Anya and check out her look for this Alien Lust palette. Now, both of us consider Hasina 2 by Blush Tribe, which is purple, green and blue, as a palette which absolutely describes us in terms of colour story. So, the big question is, how similar will our looks be when we both have the same two palettes to use? Will we use the same shadows? Will we both do halo eyes? Will she do a cut crease? There's only one way to find out. You're going to have to go across and check out her film. While you're over there, if you haven't already subscribed, why not? She's amazing. You are missing out on so much by not subscribing to her. So, hit the subscribe button when you're over there. Give her a like. Leave her a nice little comment in her comment section. And just show her the same love that you show me in mine every time. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome, lovely to have you here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there was something you liked. Uh, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy. You hit the subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. Then ring the bell, choose all notifications, keep pressing yes, yes I'm sure, yes I definitely want all of them, no I definitely want all of them. And hopefully you'll get told about, I don't know, one in every four that I upload. Oh dear, someone's not very happy next door. 
lockdown's getting to all of us. Oh yeah, ring the notification bell. That was where I was. Um, I've got an awful lot of other films you can choose to watch. Just basically pick a playlist and get comfortable because there's a lot of films for you to watch. And as I have said a very long time now, and I'm off to hearing echoed on other, should we call them less imaginative channels? Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. Because let's face it, we're all on lockdown. You might as well catch up on my films. After watching Anya's, if you haven't already done so. Right, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.